guys. Ready to get in here? Hello, everybody. Good morning. Got several announcements for you. First of all, the reminder, next week is our uh, annual election meeting. So one service at 10 a.m., and uh, the election meeting will follow. Should have got a, uh, something in the mail about um, what's, uh, well, the slate of delegates, uh, uh, not delegates, officers, and... Um, that should be available to you already. If you didn't, call the office and we'll get you a copy, either electronically or in the mail. So that's next Sunday. Uh, the, I want to let you know that our Lenten offering went very well this year. We are going to be able to give. Now, this is the offering we collected only at the Wednesday services and Monday, Thursday, Good Friday. Okay, $788 is going to go to Leeds locally and uh, we're going to give $525 to the ELCA's greatest need. So that's really great. And uh, that's all from the collection of the Lenten offerings, and then we divide it 60-40. That's how that went. So Leeds is getting $788, and uh, the lo it'll stay local, and then the ELCA greatest need will be $525. And greatest need, is, I'm guessing, is it goes to wherever they need it the most. And then lastly... We have a new Bible study that will be starting here very soon, uh, May 3rd. It's going to go for five weeks. Rhea is going to be facilitating that. It's called uh, Anxious for Nothing, and it's uh, a Max Licato, right? Um, Bible study, video Bible study, and, and apparently you could be there and you could zoom in. You could do both, right? If we'll <laughs> Hopefully it'll work. So if you intend on coming, let Rhea know one way or another. And because uh, I think there is a book, a book that's nine dollars, and um, need to get that. Okay. Okay. So that'll be coming up, and that'll be starting for uh, May third. I go for five weeks. I think it skips the week of Memorial Day, right, Rhea? So it's five weeks, but it skips Memorial Day weekend, Mondays. Because I think it's Mondays. Okay. I think that's it. So you stand for our call to worship. Alleluia, Christ is risen. To the disciples who still wondered whether he had risen, Christ Jesus said, peace be with you. May the news of Christ's resurrection bring us peace. To the winds and waves of the stormy sea of Galilee, Christ Jesus said, peace be still. May the power of our God in the midst of tribulation bring us peace. In his foretelling of the Holy Spirit yet to come on Pentecost, Christ Jesus said, my peace leave with you. When Jesus revealed the message of the gospel to his disciples gathered round, he said to them and to us, I have told you these things so that you may have peace. May the words of Holy Scripture bring us peace. In his Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said to the masses, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. May we be makers of peace, guided by our Prince of Peace. Amen. Please be seated.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. He who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Our children's moment. Hi, kids. Has a friend or a family member ever popped out of somewhere to try to surprise you? Probably. But this is not quite the same as being really scared. There are those times when we do get really scared. And in those times, it's very good to know that someone who cares about us is close by and will help us be safe. I think the disciples were experiencing something similar. They had heard mixed reports about what happened to Jesus. Some women said that Jesus' tomb was empty, and Peter said the same thing. Then their friends, who had been walking towards a little town called Emmaus, told them that Jesus had appeared to them on the road and talked to them. Can you imagine all the feelings the disciples might have been experiencing? Perhaps excited, sad, or even scared all at the same time. They were feeling this way when Jesus suddenly appeared in a locked room with them. That's right, Jesus appears. Now they are really scared. They think they're seeing a ghost. But then Jesus says, peace be with you. And he tells them to be not afraid. And guess what? He lets them touch him. Then he asks them for something to eat. Now wait a minute. You can't touch a ghost. And ghosts don't eat. That's when the disciples realized that they don't need to be afraid. It's the real Jesus. He's not a ghost. Jesus then reminds them that even in the scariest of moments in our lives, he will be with them. And that's something not to just remember, but to tell others about too. I'll see you next time. After healing a man unable to walk, Peter preaches to the people, describing how God's promises to Israel have been fulfilled in Jesus. Through the proclamation of Christ's death and, the re and resurrection, God is offering them forgiveness and restoration. A reading from the third chapter of Acts. Peter addresses the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us, as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, and the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead, to this we are witnesses. By faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. people insult me, loving what is worthless and running after what is false. Answer God with mercy, tender in love, delight. Remember
remember that the Lord has chosen the faithful to be his very own. He hears when I call them. Let each sinner turn in terror and repent of sin and error. Think deeply about this search. Think, think deeply about this. Search your heart as you lie on your bed. Then bring a faithful sacrifice. In God's worship, be a sharer. Trust him aright. There are many whose prayers are merely selfish, wanting more and more. But the joy that you provide me outweighs them all. You have put more joy in my heart, O oh God than they will ever have with all their grain and wine. In your strong protection, hide me as shadows fall. When I lie down, I go to sleep in peace. Through the night, dear Lord, defend me. Let your mighty love attend me. You will Keep me perfectly safe. Slumber, sweet mercy, send me, Savior of God has loved us in order to make us children of God. Though we do not yet know the full details of our future existence, we trust that God will reveal it just as God revealed Jesus to take away our sins. A reading from the third chapter of 1 John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do, do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. this account of the appearance after his resurrection, Jesus opens the minds of the disciples to understand him as Messiah. He convinces them that he has been raised and sends them on a mission to proclaim the message of repentance and forgiveness. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace. Be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. 
And while in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of every heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> Whoa, I can't unsee that. Have you ever unspoken or thought something like that? You know, these days it's often referred to some stupid or inane thing that shows up on your computer. Maybe Facebook or YouTube or whatever social media thing it is in a moment. Someone you know or even a complete stranger has forwarded a, a bit of video and you clicked on it. And all, of a, all at once you saw something you wish you had not seen. But you can't really unsee it, can you? And so you're stuck with that thought or those images rolling around in your head for the next few hours or days, or maybe even months. So we try to fill our minds with other things and hope that what we saw will just fade away. I want to unsee it. Maybe you've been at the wrong place at the wrong time. And those are your words. I want to unsee it. You were at the wrong place at the wrong time, and now you're being called as a witness to a crime. It's a lot of bother, right? Having to go to court, rearrange your schedule, inconvenience, and, well, depending on who the defendant is, it may be dangerous. I wish I had never even seen it, you might say. Jesus says, you are witnesses of these things. Jesus said this to his disciples before his ascension. And what did that mean to the disciples? And what does it mean for us? Today we're going to consider what it means as followers of Christ, and as witnesses to, to that. Now, if you heard that a family member or a close friend had come back from the dead, you would understand, understandably question the sanity and the reliability of the person telling you this. You would have to see in person for your own eyes, and even then you probably ask a lot of questions that you got to have to have answered before you really would believe they're not alive. Last August, a young woman who was declared dead at her suburban Detroit home opened her eyes at a funeral home as she was about to be embalmed. She was found unresponsive at home. Paramedics had been called and tried for 30 minutes to revive her, but no success. An emergency room doctor was consulted and agreed agreed with the paramedics, and so she was pronounced dead. More than an hour later, as she was about to be embalmed, she opened her eyes and was rushed to the hospital. Now, can you imagine the stories the witnesses had to tell? Things like, this just don't happen. Well, Luke tells us 
it took three events for the disciples to believe Jesus was alive. In the first event, Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women had gone back to the tomb with spices that they had prepared for Jesus' body. And they found the stone rolled away because they asked that question, who's going to roll away the stone? They're like, well, it's already rolled away. And they saw two men in dazzling clothes beside the stone. And they asked the women, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. And when the women returned and they told the 11, Judas is not there, right? They told the 11 all that they had seen, the women's words seemed, it says, as an idle tale, and they did not believe them. First event. Second event, Luke records, took place on the road to Emmaus. Jesus walked next to two men who were discussing the thing that happened in Jerusalem. What's that thing? Well, the crucifixion and burial of Jesus. And as they talked, Jesus, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, the Bible says, interpreted to them the things about himself and all his scriptures. And later, as Jesus joined them at the table, so they get to the, where they're going, they invite him inside, he takes bread, blesses it, and broke the bread and gave it to them, and then they realized who he was. Their eyes were open and they recognized him, and then he vanishes from their sight. And not <clears throat> just like, oh, okay, that was interesting. They ran back to Jerusalem to tell the eleven all the things that had happened to them. That's the story that actually taken place right before our gospel lesson. And what does it say right before our gospel lesson? The eleven didn't believe these witnesses either. At a minimum, they weren't convinced. Even though Peter, it says that Peter saw something as well. And immediately after this, it says Jesus pops in. The third event occurs. While they're discussing this thing about the Emmaus thing, while they're talking with those two men from Emmaus, Jesus stood, stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And they thought they were seeing a ghost. So would probably most of us. And he says, look at my hands. Look at my feet. See that it is me. Jesus says, touch me and see. Now, this is probably the first time this happens. So my guess is Thomas is not there. So it's probably more 10 than it is 11. But he tells them, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they were still disbelieving, he asked them, do you have anything to eat? You know, I'm starved and McDonald's is closed. Well, when offered a piece of fish, he ate it in their presence. All these things are basically saying this is a living body that's going on. You could touch it. It has a digestive system. It, he could eat it. You know, it's not a ghost. Now, did Jesus probably have a smile on his face? <laughs> when the recognition finally began to set in with these guys. We don't know, of course, but surely there was a friendly face the disciples never expected to see again in their life. He began to teach them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, even the Psalms, must be fulfilled. And then he began what must have been a, the greatest Bible study ever. Can you imagine? You know, people <clears throat> crowd into public auditoriums to hear best-selling authors talk about his or her latest book, right? Here you have the author of the universe explaining things to them about his ministry and mission in the world. Jesus went on to talk about his role as Messiah and the things that had to happen as he fulfilled that role. He had told them this before, several times, but they didn't. They didn't get it. He says that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all the nations. Then he gave this clincher. You are witnesses of these things. Not you can be witnesses. Not you should be witnesses. Not that you can choose to be a witness. You are witnesses. 
Now, they could not unsee what they had seen, right? And because of that, they had a responsibility for the rest of their lives to continue being witnesses for Jesus. Jesus continues, See, I am sending you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. And in a short time, on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit descended upon them, and they began the work of being witnesses to the world. Caroline Lewis, a professor of preaching at Luther Seminary, says of this passage, as it turns out, witnessing is not voluntary, but it is a state of being. Beloved people of God, we are witnesses. It's who we are. It's what we are. It's what we were made for. For some, that's not good news. You know, we remember when we have not war, uh, done, done that job well or maybe worn that title well that we were given. We remember when we had deferred the task of witnessing to someone else. We know sometimes probably more than we want to admit that we have not been a good witness for Jesus. But what we have to realize, however, is that we are never not a witness. So when we turn our backs on the opportunities God gives us to be witnesses, we are nonetheless continuing to be a witness, but not a good witness. Just not, as, just not at our best, are we, or most effective witness in those moments, are we? Perhaps even a witness against what God can and wants to do in our lives as God's people. And I'm one of the, one of the first ones to tell you that. There's moments in which I don't want to witness or I don't have the spirit to witness in that moment. Either way, we are still witnesses. We are witnesses in all that we do every day. When people know we are believers, they will check us out. A businessman at, a beginning, at the beginning of his career with a growing family and a meager salary asked a friend in church about airport parking for an upcoming trip. <coughs> every dollar he spent on travel came out of his pocket, and he was always looking for a way to save. The friend recommended one of the parking companies and told him it was possible to get a, a free stay after so many trips. But he said he could give him, he said, I could give you a voucher to use, but it wasn't really kind of above board. So the young man said he would manage it on his own and didn't feel right about doing anything that was questionable. So the friend smiled and said he was glad to hear that his faith was not for sale. Beloved people, God, we are witnesses and others are watching to see if God really makes a difference in our lives and in our faith. This is not an easy thing. We are witnesses in business, in school, in our marriage, in our families, as parents, as children, in our hobbies, in our sports, in all of life, we are witnesses. And we can make lots of excuses as to why we should set aside our witnessing from time to time. But those excuses really don't hold, up, hold water. We are witnesses, and every day we should look for the best way to witness to our faith and bear witness for Christ and for Christ's resurrection and everything that we do. Even pray to be a witness in a way, in a good way, that in some way we represent Christ well. And the great thing will be is even if we don't realize we're doing it, that's always the best thing. It's one thing to like, oh, I got to do this. It's another thing when you do it just naturally, represent Christ well and witness for him. Shortly after the day of Pentecost, Peter healed a crippled man and this prompted people to gather around him, as well as John at Solomon's portico. And then Peter rose to the occasion, and he preached a good word for the resurrection of Christ. And referring to the resurrection, Peter said, to this we are witnesses. And that's true for all of us. To this we are witnesses. So we are to go out and let our witness be known in our life. Amen. 
Let's stand for confession. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Jesus Christ was the first to conquer death. He is the ruler of all the kings of the earth. He loves us, and by his blood, he sets us free from our sins. Let's therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let's silently reflect on the fact that though our sin is great, Jesus Christ's love is greater. Most merciful God, we confess that we are dead in trespasses and sins. Fearful and frightened, we have failed to hear your word. In your great mercy, deliver us from the death we deserve. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. It is written that the Messiah should suffer and rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins by be proclaimed in his name. So in him, we have forgiveness, life, and resurrection from the dead. And by him, we are redeemed and set at liberty. If the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from death dwells in you, then he who raised Christ from death will also give life to your mortal body. Alleluia. Christ is risen indeed. Amen. Let us now affirm our common faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated.
please stand. <clears throat> Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Living God, in the midst of Easter joy, we are still filled with questions and wondering. Open our hearts and minds as we encounter the scriptures so that the church embodies repentance and forgiveness in the name of Jesus to all nations. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of all the nations, the nations are hungering and thirsting for righteousness. Many call on you for guidance and strength. Answer their hope with the peace of Christ and give your loving kindness to national, state, and local leaders of people. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Healing God, you hear the cries of those in need. And you answer them in their distress. Grant to those who are sick and suffering your compassion. And nurse them back to health and wholeness. We especially pray for those we mentioned before you from our hearts at this time. And be close to the hearts of the lonely. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Loving parent, you have given us such love that we should be called the children of God. Reveal yourself to us so that we in this community of faith will become more and more like you in our mutual love and bold witness. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of all time and ages, those who have died in you now see you as you are. We thank you for their lives among us. Assure us of the peace you have promised, that we may join them in everlasting life. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. up your heart let us give thanks to the Lord our God it is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you almighty and merciful god for the glorious resurrection of our savior jesus christ the true paschal lamb who gave himself to take away our sin who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life and so with mary magdalene and peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Lord Jesus, in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread and he gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Then again, after supper, he took the cup. And after he gave thanks, he gave it to them, saying, This cup 
is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Joining hands with only those in your household, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. As you come up for communion and come up as a family with your mask on to this first table where you will get your bread. If you would like gluten-free, it's in the center here on the small plate. Get your wine. If you like grape juice, that's in the center. Come over to the second table where you can put that down and take your mask off. Have your bread and drink your wine. Put the empties in the basket, put your mask back on, and return to your chair. Just remember, don't come to that first table until the people at the second table have moved on. Beloved people of God, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ is given and shed for all of you. Amen.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. As once you ate in the presence of your disciples, proving to them your presence was real, so have you shared this meal with us. Unite us in your presence. You are the Lord forevermore. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Let's sing our closing hymn. Christ is risen, alleluia, risen, our victorious head. Sing his praises, alleluia, Christ is risen from the dead. Gratefully our hearts adore him as his light once more appears. Bowing down in joy before him, rising up from griefs and tears. Christ is risen, alleluia, risen our victorious head. Sing his praises, alleluia, Christ is risen from the dead. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace and serve the risen Lord. Thanks be to God.